Welcome and good evening. Uh, welcome to tonight's guest, Robert Panholzer, who everybody who has anything to do with the Glacier knows, of course, um, and Felix Häusler. Uh, both are now from Crape, and they will explain to us what Crape is. And I have learned that it's not a messenger. It's something else. It's better. It's bigger and it can do more and it works perfectly with Atlassian and allows you to do lots of stuff with Atlassian and we will learn what that is. And I've forgotten to ask where you are joining us from, but I assume you are in the same time zone as we are. So, yes, um, so with yeah. that, good evening and over to you and we will just disappear for your presentation. Uh, everybody else, Q&A in the Q&A box or in the chat and we will pick them up whenever opportune. So, see you on the other side. All right. So, I guess I'll make the kickoff and Robert will join us then afterwards for the Q&A. And we are both uh, joining you from Vienna, even though we are in different places. Um, I'm also uh, going to be, become more and more sweaty during the presentation because, of course, I had to close all the windows because Vienna is very noisy these days. It's a very hot day as well and people are outside. Uh, I hope uh, you are seeing my screen now, um, but it seems, yeah, everything seems to work. Um, that looks good, yes. Perfect. So, um, yeah, communication is an ongoing moving target, right? Um, there's always, uh, there are always things to improve. Everybody that ever has done a project with more than two people knows that communication is the key factor, um, the key performance factor of a team, of a unit that tries to get stuff done. Um, we are um, the new challenger in, um, I think, an ongoing pro a problem that has never been perfectly solved, which is the question of how you can reduce the amount of work time wasted on communication. Um, there is a McKinsey study called uh, The Social Economy, that has found out that about 61% of all work time is dedicated to non-role specific tasks, including searching for files um, while, you're uh, while you're talking to other people, um, sharing emails, um, writing chats, documenting stuff for other people and so on. And uh, one of the biggest driving factors there is that your work communication is scattered across specialized applications that you uh, have in your company. So, our very easy approach is, um, or the question that we asked ourselves when we started was, is there a way you can bring the communication into the software everybody has? Kind of trying to turn the whole game on its head. As many of you know, um, messaging is all the rage at the mo moment. Um, back in the days, uh, chats only existed in silos. So you had standalone chats that had no integrations whatsoever. Many of you might uh, have WhatsApp on your phone or Freema or Cisco Spark or some uh, are still running Skype for Business. The challenge there always was that communication was um, kind of locked down in its own merits, right? Um, and so in the last decade, new chats emerged that had a new proposal for everybody in the workplace, which was um, bring everything into our chat, um, integrate everything into our communication system, and then everything is going to be just amazing, right? So you have Slack, Microsoft Teams, HipChat, not so much anymore um, for a brief moment. There was also Stride, uh, MetaMost, RocketJet. All those chats have one concept uh, in common, which is they see themselves um, kind of like the center of a business, right? Um, one of the slogans of Slack for a long time was, on their website, everything you can do at work, you can do inside of Slack. Now, the question we asked ourselves is, do you have to do everything inside of Slack? Is this how large enterprises really work? Don't you want to work from Jira? Don't you want to work from within Confluence? Uh, don't you want to use your own HR platform that you built 10 years ago and so on? And so what we introduce is the exact opposite. Basically a chat that runs inside every software you have gives that software superpower and um, by extension, of course, your team. Um, and that's what Great basically is. We built the whole thing on uh, three pillars. Um, the first one is the chat that is omnipresent within all the tools. So a chat that can be opened from within any system. 
And in about a second, I'm going to show you how this uh, exactly looks. Um, the second thing is a deep search called the grape search that allows you to access any data while you are talking. Um, so basically, similar like adding an emoji, like a smiley or a cat face or like a, I don't know, a rocket. You can just add any information, any data that exists in your company. Um, and the polar opposite, which is um, an, a natural language processing engine called the Grape AI that allows you to um, automatically create workflows um, or find communication just uh, through the system by having the system tag your messages automatically while you're communicating. So uh, just in summary, we are everywhere. We can find anything and we save everything that you're talking about in the right place. Um, and that's uh, what makes Grape Grape. Uh, without further ado, because I know everybody wants to rather see how a system like that works, I'm going to switch over to my Chrome browser and hopefully you're going to see something. Um, what you're seeing here is the basic Grape Messenger, right? Um, on the left side, you have your navigation, you have uh, private communications, you have groups that are locked, you have groups that are open, we communicate here with every partner, every customer, and so on. And we, like every other chat, also have integrations for bots and for activities. So what you see here, uh, somebody created an issue inside of Jira. This is how every other chat integrates software at the moment. Now, what Grape does is, as I said, uh, something that goes the other way. Um, so, um, but before I jump there, we of course also have video communication. Sorry, before <laughs> I jump ahead. Uh, uh, I don't want Robert to uh, smite me for not uh, adding that. We have fully integrated mass, uh, video conferencing in every conversation and so on. And now with that being said, I jump over to Jira and show you a Jira ticketing system as everybody hopefully knows. Um, you have yeah your normal title, your, your description and so on. But there's another thing that uh, can be found here on the bottom right, which is the grape section where you can basically go and say, you know what? I want to start a conversation inside of Grape. So with this click, we have just created a fully functional Grape messaging conversation. And I can write, hi team, uh, let's discuss X, Y. Um, and if I go back to uh, the Grape tab here, you can see that the same conversation has emerged uh, inside um, uh, of Grape. So if you would open Grape now on your cell phone, you would see the same conversation that has happened inside of Jira. Jira. And so um, we kind of try to co consolidate communication from all the different tools that you have back into an, a centralized messaging system. So Im imagine if your sales team could communicate the same way through the CRM as your project management team could, and as well your ERP uh, division, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, they all access the same communication system from within the tools they are using. You can streamline communication across all tools like you never could before. Um, and the way this thing integrates uh, goes deeper. So let's say I had a, a conversation with my team, we went on a video conference and we made an important decision. Um, decision, we make the website banner red, let's say. That's the big new uh, emerged. Uh, call to action. And as you can see, uh, by pinning the conversation, this uh, chat message um, resurfaces uh, here inside the Jira ticket. So all the decisions that you made that were important uh, bubble right back into the ticket. So you have no issues uh, with finding um, all the important part of your informal conversations. Also, you can jump right back and see how the team arrived at that decision. And that's uh, basically the omnipresence, the first pillar of uh, how Grape integrates into your software. Now, level two, uh, as I said, is the Grape search. So let's say I want to find an important file. So um, let's say I want to add Stefan to the conversation because Stefan is super important. I can add him here as an assignee. Our uh, CTO uh, has been added to the conversation and automatically, of course, gets also added to the chat right here. So everything is connected to your Jira tickets. And I want him, oops, uh, to check out the file. So I can write uh, Stefan, 
please check out. And instead of uh, leaving my train of thought and uh, going into another tab, I can just press the hash key on my keyboard. Or I can press here on this icon. And without any delay, I can write, for example, pitch deck. Immediately, I can find all the results in Dropbox, Google Calendar, but it could be any other system that is connected. I can see a kind of a preview of what the file is all about. I can see when it was modified and so on. Um, and then I can open it, so I can jump right into this uh, file and find it inside uh, Google Drive, for example. Or I can, uh, for example, add it to the message. Now what happens is, um, this is just a link. So I haven't uploaded the, the Google Drive file. I've just linked it from the chat. So if this file changes, um, the message of course also links to the newly changed file. Ensuring also that if a person gets uh, wind of this message and clicks on this link uh, that doesn't have access to this file can also not access this file, right? Um, this also works for my own, uh, I, like uh, made integration. So if I, for example, um, click the plus here to filter through all the different uh, services, you can see we've created our own uh, oops, uh, uh, little integrations. We have our own reaction GIFs. I can write uh, like an OK, for example, and uh, immediately find everything from the largest GIF platform. I can search on, uh, let's say, uh, YouTube, external search engines as well for uh, Jira service desk videos, uh, for example, if I want to learn something. And so uh, the whole world, not only my integrated services, but also my own uh, self-developed things and also uh, external services like YouTube and so on can be searched and immediately accessed from within Gray. So for the first time, you have no delays um, communicating about anything within your company. And now, that's basically the second part, right, uh, grape search. The third part is the AI that we've developed. And a little disclaimer here, due to COVID, this will uh, be delayed a little bit until it really hits market. But I want everybody to see where we are heading because uh, the main goal of grape with everything we are building is just to build a software that doesn't replace your existing tools, but uh, enhance them, right? And so the third level, um, the grape AI, works uh, like this. I can write, hi, uh, Hubert, let's meet for World of <laughs> Warcraft uh, tomorrow. Not everybody has heard about the pre-communication that we had, but um, I think you get the drill. The system immediately understands that we are talking about an appointment. So I get the option to, for example, create a calendar just by me writing about it. As you can see here, the calendar entry has been added and everything um, yeah, works as expected. Same thing would go if I write, um, hi, um, I don't know, Robert, call me via um, 0650, 89, 84, 81, please. Just try to not write a real uh, phone number. As you can see, I can create a uh, task out of this. So for example, inside of Trello, or I can write uh, pizza or sushi, very important questions. The real questions of life are being answered here. And everything uh, yeah, gets automatically um, labeled, as you can see here in the background with the debug view. Um, first, we understand the language. At the moment, the system works in English and German. Um, it then understands what we are talking about. So if I, for example, write, what is the meaning of life? Uh, just based on the grammar, it understands this is an open question. If I write, are you there? It understands this is a question you can answer with yes or no and so on and so forth. Um, this is our own uh, developed system. Uh, Grape runs on premises, so you can host it on your own servers or in the uh, secure European cloud. Um, so you, um, and also, sorry, um, you can have it as a housing service. So one of our partners can ho house it for you and you get your own private cloud basically hosted from uh, one of our partners that are cert certified for Grape and so on and so forth. And um, all the features you saw here, the Grape search, uh, the integrated uh, messenger um, that is omnipresent in all your tools, and in the, the future also our AI, will all work um, on your own proprietary software. So we will not 
uh, have access to any communication here. This is not sending any data back to any cloud service and so on. This is all our own IP. And uh, with that uh, being said, um, I guess as a quick summary, I switch again back to my keynote. Um, our main goal is to create a communication layer between humans and machines, right? We want you to just talk the way you talk in real life and have all the tools just uh, organize themselves around your natural communication. We all kind of have learned to talk like robots just because our tools constantly make us relearn how we communicate. And so what we want to do is make the chat available everywhere in your system, understand um, everything, uh, all your databases or the machines you work with, then understand you with NLP and then uh, combine everything. And that's what, the, what GRAVE is all about. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Felix. Uh, I just want to add three things here. Uh, one of the reasons why, why I joined Grape was not only because the company is headquartered in Vienna, uh, it's also a reason that you don't have to ask anybody in the US if you were allowed to do this or to do that. Uh, so we are making our decisions in Vienna. So it's a European based company. Uh, software quality is, is European style. And one important thing to me also was that we are developing basically one product, but you have three options how you deploy the product. So you can use the great cloud, which is a cloud service, which runs on, this, uh, on the servers in the, or in the IT center of Hetzner. If you don't like Hetzner or, or you prefer any other hosting platform, just go there and run this as a housing service or as a managed hosting service, however you name that. And if you then decide you are super paranoid about your data, you can just pull the server and put it back in your IT center. So we have two options with behind the firewall. One is managed by the partner or hosted by the partner. One is run by you in your IT center. And the third option is the public cloud, is the public cloud or is the, is the, is the cloud option of, of Grape. Uh, in addition to that, it doesn't matter where you start. So if you start as a cloud customer, and you think, okay, that's not strategic. Let be under the radar for the first 200, 400, 500 users. Don't talk to our IT people, just use the subscription service. That's fine. And after that, you simply pull the container and put it in your IT center and you run it instantly uh, on your IT center or in your environment. We don't change any invoicing. We don't change any, any things like this. There's only one thing we have changed in the past is that Grape is 100% partner. So we don't sell direct to a customer. We only do this really, really on an exceptional basis, maybe for some public customer who really want to purchase with, with us. Uh, and the reason to change to partners is very simple. All we can sell at Grape or all the customer can buy from Grape is the Grape Messenger, the integrated messenger. If you work as a partner or if you work in an IT department, you know your territory, you know your landscape, you know all the variables. So how should we dare to explain you what you have to do in your IT environment? Yeah. So we know what to do. And we now have the integration for Jira and for Confluence. We are working on integrations with Monday uh, because we think Monday is, an, is a very, very strong product, really upcoming. And uh, when you look at the growth rate, it's a, it's, a very impressive, it's a very impressive company, but it's not only limited to the Atlassian universe, uh, universe, right? It's all about CRM systems. So we're talking to some Salesforce consultants. Uh, there are uh, other CRM systems and the great messenger is also the chance to integrate your legacy systems. So if, you, you know, if you're a BMC customer, if you use ServiceNow now for ages, how would you integrate all these different services into one messenger platform where you can easily talk out of your ticketing system into one constant platform? Uh, and that's the huge advantage for, for, for that, okay? Uh, Grape is only sold on a subscription base. Uh, it's sold in Euro. Uh, it has been translated to Polish in, I think it was a very little time frame from our partner Divinity in Poland. And we also up to maybe run a hackathon and develop in a hackathon grape in Vienna dialect, right? So the next languages will, which will come up is maybe Berlinerisch. Don't know how to translate that in, into English. <laughs> uh, so if you fancy, you can do that. Uh, more on a serious note, we go for Italian, we go for French, 
uh, and maybe the, one of the next questions will be a Spanish because there's a difference between the, the European Spanish and the Latin America Spanish. So it's a bit difficult for us. We, we have to make a decision there. Uh, but if you have ever worked in the French market uh, and you know you can't survive with, a, with an English software, yeah, that's, that's simple as it is. You can change the language while you work. So this is one thing, Felix, uh, so this is, this is for the retro tomorrow. Yeah? So you have missed that to show that. Uh, so it's super easy to switch the language because we strongly believe the more you go away from the typical IT people, so the more you go to the white collar worker, the more you go to the blue collar worker, uh, it's less or it's more important to have that in local language. Okay. Good. So we have four questions in the F and A. Uh, Felix, I don't know if, if uh, have you run through the questions already. I looked a little bit through it. Um, great questions. Thanks, Frank. Um, which one are we taking first? Um, also, I'm very keen on seeing what happens if I click to answer in the video. Um, let me try. So for the grape conversation. So what happens now? Do you see something differently after I press this? Yes. You're answering this question in real time. This is wow. what it's saying. For the grape conversations, do you choose participants based on ticket reporter, assignee, and watcher? Uh, exactly. So I guess this was for the omnipresent messaging integration. So you can change within the project settings of every Jira Grape integration, what kind of user fields are uh, syncing to Grape. So if you create your own uh, fields, let's say for a tester or something like that, you can say that this custom field um, can, can automatically um, ensure that the user gets synced into Grape. Um, I hope this answers your question. Um, number two, when you share a file or link in the grape conversation on a ticket, will it be attached link to on the Chira tech uh, ticket? Not at the moment. So um, if you uh, share anything within grape, it's, uh, it's basically available within Jira on the sidebar. And if you pin it, it also appears inside of Jira, right? So grape is really reserved for the informal part of um, decision-making. So you can talk, you know, for an, ad hoc question, you can just reach the right people at the moment where you look at the ticket, which is already amazing, right? And then when you make larger decisions and so on, of course, you can still just change everything in the description of the Jira ticket and so on. But that being said, every integration that we have gets developed by, um, by partners. And so our partners are constantly working together with our customers or respectively their customers on improving the integrations. So if you, for example, get the Jira integration for your project, you have a direct line to the partners that are in charge of developing that integration. And if you say, um, I want to have a, um, you know, a better soft attachment policy, for example, our API is not the limitations. Every integration can be um, advanced towards the particular service they are integrated in, which gives you a lot of power. So yeah. Um, you want to you wanna do one, Robert? before I'm throwing all of them out. Yes, also, go ahead. Uh, okay. out, uh, I can't, we can't see you at the moment, just so you know. Oh, I'm still nice. here. There we go. Okay, now go ahead with, with answer to your questions. All right. <laughs> is there a possibility to attach a transcript of the conversation on the ticket after it is resolved? So this works, um, I saw it, uh, especially when it comes to Jira, mostly being done through the pinning feature. So people often use, uh, use our pinning feature that basically pins the messages from Grape back into the tool um, as this particular transcript, because not every message is important, right? Um, so if you have chats, uh, they often have like 11 messages and one within that conversation is really important. And we really try to follow this uh, philosophy that the chat is not the center of your business, right? And so many of the decisions are, of course, ongoing, but we saw a huge uh, success in that regard. So when the ticket is resolved, the, the chat anyway gets um, archived with the uh, Jira ticket. So you can access it still from the ticket. And uh, if something has been pinned in there, it still is visible within the Jira ticket. So that's kind of how we are solving it at the moment. But yeah, we're always open for better solutions because our partners will do it. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So to get, sorry to jump in there, but to get the philosophy of Grape is that we develop the core system. So we develop the messaging platform and everything else around it 
should be developed by a partner or even by a customer, right? So we are not, we're not refraining customers from, from developing add-ons. Uh, so we have a huge customer in Austria in the betting industry, and they are really, really keen to have this or that feature. So we are building a roadmap for them and say, okay, this is important. This is important. Could we use this for, for just for you, for one customer, or could we reuse this for more than one customer? And then you know how this works. Uh, so the, the, the upvoting is getting more serious, and, and the more we reuse this feature, very likely we will pull this forward. Yeah. Uh, what we do in the, uh, or why we don't attach the transcription of the ticket into chat, uh, maybe just to add something here is what Felix mentioned is, if you add something into the chat tool and you have a company policy, and we do have a customer uh, in the banking industry, they want to delete all the chat history after time after 10 years. So that, that was a mandatory request for implementing the chat there for data security or for any other reasons, uh, not, not going into a uh, banking finance industry right now, because I think it's a bit of a sensitive topic, uh, but some companies have a policy simply to delete messages in the chat tool because the chat tool is not the leading system. So the only truth or the point, single point of truth should be a ticketing system uh, uh, and not, not the chat system because chat system could be replaced, but the ticket is a ticket. And this is, this is where you book all your time and, and where you book your work. Yeah? So, but if you want it, you can have it. Uh, very unlikely that is, uh, or very likely that you will store the data on, on two points. Uh, so in the chat room and in the ticket. And then, uh, well, you should inform me because and then I have to share, to buy some shares from NetApp or any other storage company if you increase your, your, your volume. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's always very interesting, right? Where's the single point of truth and so on? I think we, um, just in general, to get a little bit philosophical, um, over the last 10 years, uh, one product became very successful around the messaging industry, right? And the best thing they did was to really make this kind of IRC concept um, stand out and make it user-friendly and really scale it out, right? And I think after that, many products just jumped on this bandwagon and tried to just follow this one direction, right? Bring everything into the chat and so on and so forth. Um, but in our opinion, a chat shouldn't be a product. A chat should be a feature that every product has. Because uh, in the real world, you can speak in every room, right? You can just go to your uh, colleagues and you go down into the, you know, mailing room or whatever, or that's very old school. Uh, you go down to the sales department and you can just speak. Um, in the virtual world, you constantly have to leave every tool behind and go back into this one tool where you talk. And that seems to us very medieval in a certain way, right? And of course, it takes some time to... Uh, um, to, to adapt this idea, but the moment you've just used it once, and we can uh, vouch for this after having countless uh, customers onboarded in this area, right? From small uh, uh, 250 seat players up to 2.5 million students and teachers with the largest school service provider in all areas, the moment you see a chat that just lives inside your tool and puts the product again into the front, right? The ticketing system, the documentation system, the sales system, the serious stuff, right? That uh, the drivers of of, uh, of your business, and uh, uh, but but streamline basically the chat across all of them. The people very quickly understand that this will be the next thing, um, and will take some time. And it's always a, a, a challenge um, pushing new things, but um, I think it will benefit all of you tremendously because we don't just want to work 39 percent of the day on 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 our real work right we want to bring this back up to over 50 percent yeah Do when you think some? outside out, sorry. sorry when you when you think outside of the it world uh for example expense systems yeah so when we think about a sales organization everything a sales guy really really hates is doing expenses uh, so if you have a cool expense system in your house think about okay the uh the accounting team could not only call up the sales guy and ask, okay, what is this received? Uh, you had a customer lunch with whom, which company, blah, blah, blah. Uh, why don't you do this in a chat room, right? Uh, maybe you have a ticket, but in the chat room, you can, you can easily go to the, to the people. And uh, because it's all server centered and it's all stored in the server, it's also very easy to audit that stuff, right? So you can always audit and say, okay, I have informed the salesperson if he or she is not reacting in this or that time. Yeah, well, I simply leave that out, right? 
So why should I bother the, the salespeople just for whatever 42 euro ex expenses if he or she doesn't return my, my chat message, right? Returning a phone call is always good to have an excuse. So maybe think about outside of Atlassian. I'm, I'm, it's, it's also tough for me to think outside of the Atlassian world because after five years at Atlassian, you, you don't really believe that there's any, any other software out in the universe, but the reality is there is uh, some other software. Uh, and and it's, it's really fascinating how to see that uh, in addition to that, the product also could be white labeled, so it could be hidden in a system if you are an ERP or CRM vendor, uh, because it's also up to us to decide that. And I say, okay, you want to have it just in your expense system or in your CRM system, that's fine. Right? But that's, that's a perfect door opener uh, as a partner, as a customer, whatever, to bring a different messenger platform into, uh, into, into your company. Right? So for end customer communication, I could also brand it with my company CI or whatever. Right. Yeah. So if I have a service desk, for example, and have a chat in that service desk. Yeah. Um, so that could be branded in my CI. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have we have all op we have all options. We do have all possibilities to say, okay, yeah. that's a limited license then. So I don't want to call it runtime license, but from from a thinking perspective, if you just have one system and you need just for this one system, you can sell it with the application. And in a land and expand strategy, you say, okay, that's that's a nice chat tool. What do you use here? Could we extend the usage of this tool for whatever, even for the board members, right? Uh, because you don't you don't have to come up with fancy features. You really have to have uh, yeah the opportunity also to get. The DAO users, so the first political incorrect statement today. Uh, so it should be board ready, right? So it should be board ready. Take it, take it like this. Right? Yeah, I just came up with the trans transcript because, like, um, usually, like, I take the the ticket system as system of truth. So I check on the ticket, and I want to see every conversation and everything on the ticket, and like follow up. So even like if I find the ticket like two years ago. Or yeah. something which I don't remember, of course. So I just want to check like what led to the to a specific decision and stuff. And uh, sometimes there are like more messages involved. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I was a bit uh, iffy if they um, when you mark them as being like important, you may just like screw up the comment uh, stuff in in the ticket uh, right. from the from the row and. A good, good point. Uh, maybe if I can jump on that. Um, at the moment, uh, um, this was a huge challenge, right? Asking ourselves, should we put it inside the comment system or should we put it above it? And at the moment, the pinned messages are above the comment system. So um, there are certain, uh, certain customers have requested already if it c could be adapted to be pushed, you know, within the comment system, basically the pinned messages arrive there. But at the moment, that challenge uh, does not arise uh, in that particular part because everything that has been pinned and grape just uh, is in this section above it, right? And those messages then, if you click them, lead back to the full conversation. So um, even if you, you know, uh, have the challenge five years later to figure out what, <laughs> what led to this a uh, crazy decision, whatever it, uh, it was, right? That that you now have to pinpoint. You will um, you will have the full conversation ahead if it hasn't been archived due to your policies, right? Which mm -hmm. previously mentioned. Um, but it's yeah, it's a it's an ongoing process because of course we make a huge leap already forward by bringing uh, the same conversation into all the tools. But of course, there are new challenges that arrive there, right? We cannot immediately promise that you can spend a hundred percent of your time of the day. Um, with, uh, uh, with, with just the work you want to do. But um, I would say you, if you are twice as fast, it's already good enough. And we hope to reach the rest with your help and with your feedback. So um, we'll get there, hopefully. Felix, we have a last question for you. Right. Question, can you point the tools, EG Calendar, on a general decision or is it chosen individually, company using Outlook? Who is using Outlook? Preferably right. Calendar Conference Team. Who is using, seriously, who is using Conference Team Calendar? <laughs> We are using it. We are. Okay, yeah. <laughs> take back. That's just kidding. Right. <laughs> so uh, that being said, um, in general, that's, by the way, the biggest holdup. So we have already researched the full NLP part, right? This was a huge project with the Austrian Research Center for Artificial Intelligence to make this our own technology. And now uh, the reason why this might arrive, you know, somewhere in 2021 
uh, is that we have to connect it and make a nice connection platform where you can decide this calendar is for this user group and so on and so forth and uh, bring it into the UX basically in a proper way. So uh, that's uh, full disclosure, the big issue. It's not anymore on the scientific part, it's more on the implementation part. And that's what we are trying to, to really nail because if you don't get this right, uh, AI can be pretty annoying, right? Everybody knows about Google Glasses <laughs> and uh, certain technology shifts, especially if a tool all of a sudden starts, uh, you know, documenting everything automatically or half automatically as in our UI, where you get recommendations, what could happen and you can just click it on the go. Um, if that doesn't, you know, put it in the right calendar based on your division and if we don't have a nice uh, API uh, where you can uh, build very quickly new connections to calendars or new connections to ticketing systems. And if that doesn't, you know, adapt properly in the UI, so it uh, doesn't show up nicely and okay. can uh, very easily debugged and improved, uh, then we haven't done our job. And so we really want to nail this. And until then, you will have an omnipresent messenger that finds everything. So that's also okay, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah. Did this answer uh, your questions, Frank, or do you? Um... Yeah, I'm just like uh, I see this also like a really difficult for for the implementation view or point of view because you can uh, German German we say like tierisch in die Nessel setzen damit, so you can like screw it up tremendously. Like when you like uh, for example when board stuff ends up in uh, Google Calendar and it's like public publicly viewable or something. Right. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. So that's why we do it half automatically, right? So um, there was a word for a while that we tried, but marketing wise, it's an absolute nightmare. So we just switched up the AI with IA because there's a term called intelligence amplification. And the difference is that uh, where AI does something, uh, you know, proactively without you doing anything, IA kind of tries to involve you in, in the decision making. So what we actually do is we say, hey, there was a task. Do you want to click here to add this to the task system? Because, you know, uh, for now, I think you would rather have this per personal input and have this kind of control over what happens with the system. So with that design choice, we already ensure that nothing happens without you, a human saying, yes, let's do this, right? And so uh, that step has helped already in many of those processes because I totally agree with you. If, if you do something and a tool has a false positive in any way and does something without you, you know, giving the head start and it has anything to do with business, this could be, yeah, this could lead you down a very weird path. And even, I got to say, to some people, even if it's the right thing, it's pretty creepy, right? So, <laughs> so even if it does the right thing, uh, you wouldn't want to be out of control because the biggest important thing for new technology is control. If you want adaption, you need to give the user control of it. That, that leads me to one question that I have concerning the permissions that you need, for example, in Dropbox or whatever. So if you add a file from your link to a file from your Dropbox and everything, so that includes always the permission to share the, the document. So if you, let's say, share a file, pin it to a ticket, then everybody who has the link can view that file or how is that handled? So how do you sync these permissions? Right, so um, there are two parts, two challenges within Grape Search. That's why also we, we had to invest quite a lot into the development of it in regards of permission handling. The first part is who can find stuff, right? So you already need a permission tree for every system because you don't want somebody to type, you know, like, uh, Felix, uh, you know, firing <laughs> or whatever, or something like that. Um, and uh, the other part is what you said, which is uh, how will the sharing options afterwards work, right? The good thing is, um, and please don't grill me on Dropbox, but I think that's the way maybe you can clarify it afterwards, um, is that the second part with, if a link is shared, it still requires you to have viewing permissions if it doesn't use a public sharing link, right? So what happens, is basically, and sorry for answering just the second part, I will get to the first part. Steve Jobs is rotating in his grave for me for doing this the wrong way around. But um, the, the, um, what happens usually is the following. You share a Drive or Dropbox file or a Confluence uh, a link or something like that. 
and the user, because it, the, the user is with you in the same department, will click on it and arrive at the right thing, right? Worst case, they haven't logged in in a while, so they have to enter the Confluence login data, and then they add, uh, end up at the article, right? Um, but sometimes you have a guest user, for example, in this one project, and then you share that link, and the user sees the link and clicks on it, um, that's the moment where um, most tools nowadays, and I would say um, I speak for about 95% of all tools that you have, will have uh, link security on it, right? So Drive tells you, hey, you don't have permissions, please uh, log in. Or if you are already logged in, hey, click here to request access to this file. Uh, this goes for every Microsoft tool, every Atlassian tool, every uh, Google uh, Apps tool, and most you know, in between. So um, nowadays, especially with web, uh, uh, tech, uh, with um, uh, security by obscurity not being, you know, a good term in the web anymore, right? It's just making a very long hash where link is not <laughs> accounting for real security. Um, people are more um, aware of that. And so this is handled by the software we integrate and all of the time, actually. This, the first part um, um, is who can find something. And so there are, are two ways. Either we have indexed the software, then we save with every file who has viewing and sharing permissions, right? So if it's with Dropbox or something, every file basically just saves in our permission tree who can, uh, who can search this. So if you type anything into the grape search, you always only see the stuff that you are allowed to see within the tools that I've integrated. Okay. Or... Um, if it's your own large search engine, it's similar to the YouTube search I showed. Um, sometimes we just use the existing search engine. So you write, for example, I want to search in, I don't know, uh, let's say a Confluence for an article um, and you type this in, then we go to the API and we say, hey, this user wants to see results for this word. And so then the tool itself even uh, ensures that the permission tree is handled properly. Um, that was very technical. I apologize, but I hope I could clarify it. You can cut it out and make a second video if it doesn't do you, fit. Do you support um, single sign-on? So SAML, OAuth, anything? So that yes, sir. Uh, Summer to um, LDAP uh, and Crowd, ah. um, which might be important to some of you. Um, a few of our customers were very keen on, on getting a proper Crowd integration. And so we have a very sophisticated um, integration in that area as well which is also directly supported at the moment from us and uh, might be in the future through a partner. But uh, the stack is already very powerful and handles thousands of uh, users in many different divisions. Do you have enforcing policies in place? Uh, for example, like uh, our company said, like Dropbox is not secure. So like we're not allowed to use it, uh, like to prevent like users from uh, pasting Dropbox stuff in there. Right. So, good, good question. So in general, if it comes to the integrations, um, the admin can activate any integration as, uh, as they choose. Um, if you run the whole thing on premises, I guess you don't even want to have users uh, maybe create their own integrations. Maybe you just want to do it top down and, you know, uh, decide who can basically add integrations, um, that and so forth. The other part, which um, I guess you're uh, playing towards is more the question of um, if we have a feature to directly audit certain links to be shared and so on. Um, at the moment, uh, you can just do this through APIs. So similar to uh, future uh, data retention policies that banks are implementing at the moment, you can also, um, if you run it in your own on-premises system, ensure that you have uh, you know, content auditing or something like that in place. And in the future, once we are done with the uh, natural language processing part, you could, of course, use that particular feature to, you know, filter certain things out because speech act detection is very powerful if you want to ensure that in your company, for example, nobody, I don't know, shares uh, certain parts of, of uh, very important data and so on. So you could even train it in a more, I would say, um, open-ended kind of way uh, and less on just, you know, like certain buzzwords or something like that, which would be like the basic classic way of approaching this. But um, yeah, at the moment, it's more about um, bringing all the conversations into the chat and ensuring that the people on all those different systems have a secure way of communicating and being able to reach everybody the same way in the company. 
could I could I train your AI on my own data set? So let's say I'm an insurance company or uh, and want to teach the AI the insurance business. That's uh, a particular part that also phases into that UI thing I mentioned, right? Yeah. Uh, so how does the thing work? It's a uh, um, and I hope my data scientists don't don't kill me after saying this already. But it's basically a random forest uh, system that we use to train. Uh, speech uh, act classifiers on but whatever uh, um, basically your communication is here underneath is a lexicon that understands a particular language right so this can be German for example that understands grammar and what is a noun what is a verb and so on and underneath is our magic the, the training data set that understands okay based on this particular sentence structure this is a question or this is an idea or, whatever right and um, going out from that in there you could uh, basically adapt anything what happens in there what you basically do is you put uh, in the beginning a few uh, students into a into a shed and they have to classify five million emails for a week and then you have a new language trained kind of and what our UI should be doing in the future and this is what we are steering towards is that you can just say okay uh, that our system basically says hey this particular sentence has been said now for a hundred times and you have labeled it yourself with, I don't know, let's say backend restructuring project or something like that. Do you want us to in the future label this automatically, right? So this is how we approach the whole thing. So you can kind of in the future derive your own labels for each message and our system at a certain point will take over and ask you if you want the system to guesstimate uh, the next sentences and the next uh, labels uh, from there on out. So this would allow you to train your own thing. And by the way, everything, if it runs on premises in your own thing, um, but also if you have it in your own private cloud or however you want to set it up, right, uh, belongs only to you, right? So the data is not as with other service providers in their own, you know, entangled in their own cloud strategy, AI, you know, uh, enhancement projects where they just have certain rights to, anonymously train on your data set and so on this is your stuff so if okay. uh, at the moment we bring this out and you train your own let's say berlin dialect um, um tasks or something task classification engine then this will be your stuff right and that's why we for example also provide our services to the national um health insurances in austria right and want the public tender there because we are the last bastion i think in europe when it comes to uh, Europe made, Europe based on premise uh, um, capable software, and uh, particularly when it comes to that kind of integration, right? Mm -hmm. to, uh, I'm especially thinking about frontline organizations. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know telecommunications a bit, so they have these huge decision trees for frontline workers to narrow down uh, uh, a bug, an issue to the infrastructure, to the department that's responsible, and stuff like that. So if I can train your AI for the chat or something, uh, it could support my frontline person in navigating that decision tree by already giving me the right labels, for example. Right. right. Very powerful stuff. I think this is where we are heading towards, right? We, we have to find a way to ensure that the way we are talking right now becomes the normal way of running a business again, right? Like at the moment, we all are constantly staring at different interfaces that are, uh, especially with, also when it comes to communication, nothing more but uh, an Excel sheet on steroids. Everything is just input output in a way, yeah. right? but we have a hundred different interfaces for it. And what we kind of, tr uh, and I think where the industry will also shift towards is that uh, you and I can talk the way we want to, wherever we are, that the system gives us all those different tools that currently look completely different yeah. in one consolidated way, right? And we hope that this will be the grape search, right? And the third thing is that um, this particularly, um, this minutes of meeting kind of um, uh, redundant work that you have to do, basically writing down what you're saying, even though all systems nowadays, the technology is there already, that you can you know, document this to a certain degree. Um, this all will, I think, uh, um, connect over the next uh, 24 months and in this particular yeah. time frame. And just looking at Atlassian, sorry, just looking at Atlassian, that is a huge gap in service desk for any serious frontline organization that, that this is missing in service desk. Uh, so service desk is basically just a dumb queue with a knowledge base. So uh, nothing fancy. 
right. a bit of workflow, but what you pay the big bucks for in the grown-up systems, to say that, is this handling of decision trees, being able to label, analyze what your customer is talking about. Uh, did correlate, did we see that issue before and all that stuff. And that is all hardcore stuff, which costs huge amounts of money and it's which is a, is a big gap in service desk right now and in Jira for that matter. But uh, I totally agree. I also, um, there was a big conversation with a um, competitor I'm currently not naming, but, but mm -hmm. they are also uh, looking into a project. Of course, COVID was a big issue, right? But mm -hmm. there is a emerging um, um, idea called swarming. I don't know how much, yeah. uh, yeah, right? And uh, which is not anymore the classic, you know, uh, free tier model, but more a concept where you try, hopefully in the future, to automatically understand what um, tickets to focus on as a group first, right? And so there are huge chances uh, to develop something with us, for example, to just try to get some intelligence in which people would be needed to fix those freaking tickets that are closed you know, before the SLA is going to explode in your face or one of those tickets that has been shifted back and forth between two divisions for three weeks or something like that and have an intelligent tool say, hey, look, this is your 12th ticket agenda. These three people are the ones you have to have a meeting with right now and you have to be in the same video call because let's be honest, we might not be sitting all in the same meeting room in the next few months. Uh, click here and start a great call, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. I think there is a huge power in this. Because that would also be very powerful with Opsini, for example. Uh, we had an Opsini yeah. presentation at the beginning of this series, and uh, the, in the integration with Slack was a topic. But mm -hmm. that was just, hey, let's find Peter, Paul, and Mary and discuss this ticket. But uh, your system could tell me you have to talk to Peter, Paul, and Mary to right. find a solution for that ticket. And not right. me thinking or calling 100 people, do I have to, who, do, who, do, I, who do I have to talk to? To solve right. and do it do it both ways right so you yeah. can you can teach optionally how to find uh, what to do in in in, yeah. in an alarming routine so yeah. calling or sending a text or, or raising a ticket and also the other way around yeah so right. you, you can teach that so, so i have two short questions so uh, uh from technical point of view so how can i start on premise that to use it and test it and second question how can I uh, use that with external uh, employees and external companies? So right. what's the, the idea behind the right. GRAPE strategy? The, the, first, the, first, uh, the first part of the answer is uh, talk to a partner, uh, which is close to you. And, and the other part, you can always invite guest users. Then, right? mm -hmm. so but how have... about that uh, data confidential and so on? Uh, so if I will uh, um, invite somebody external, I don't want to show him my open channel. So is it like more like another organization like in Slack or like shared channel with another grape or? So um, the, the general setup um, on that side, maybe I should also plug just uh, so that the other partners don't get angry, uh, grape.io slash partners. So you can see a list of partners. Uh, generally for guests, they get invited to the same organization you're in and they only see the particular conversations and the particular people in those conversations within your organization. So the same thing you saw with my navigation, my long one, you will, if you invite somebody to, let's say, project XY, you just get this particular project as a conversation. And um, uh, the people in that conversation are the ones that the user can reach. So to the user, it looks like an organization that has no other conversation, no other people. And the user will also not be capable of finding other guests, for example, and look up every you know, consultant you work with or something like that. And so it's very convenient for you when you have to run your company. And one thing we added as a security um, feature is that all your employees, if they invite a guest, if you allow them to invite guests, um, have to set a time uh, until the user gets automatically removed. And then the user can ask for a renewal or you can particular, you know, you can jump in for a particular user and add more time, but you have to give it a deadline because there is, you know, uh, if it's a project that runs forever, then put in 2023 and be done with it. But um, there will be a point where the person is not right. part. Of it. If it's a ticket, just put in five days, right? And after that, uh, he or she is gone. Uh, if you need to extend it, you can extend it. But only the admin can extend the the, uh, the, the usage of this of this guest of this guest account. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks.
for for the Jira part with the group uh, conversation, uh, how do you handle the life cycle for that group chat? So I expect like uh, when the ticket is closed uh, and resolved that you like archive the chat or how does it work with when a ticket gets moved into another project and the uh, uh, issue key changes? So in general, the conversation is always assigned to that particular ticket and uh, which chat it is, is basically stored in the ticket. So if you move the ticket, um, the chat should be just the same and, and, and stay in there. Um, there is an API call where you can close the conversation. Um, I'm not uh, right now uh, at the top of my head. I think that um, conversations by default get archived as well when the ticket gets archived. Um, but yeah, um, if not, it's definitely something you can set through the API and so on. And so um, it really depends on what it is, right? So for a very for a service desk integration, it makes more sense, I guess, to you know close very early on. Whereas for um, let's say a document or an article within Confluence, you might want to have you know a longer running thing, or you might even want to uh, have a conversation after the fact that you know that the article has been archived and so on. For example, to ask why the article has been archived, right? <laughs> Which yeah. might be an important topic. But it's um, it's a feature that Grape allows, and it's always uh, connected to how the partner has integrated it into that particular software. Do you have a growth estimations for, like, example, like uh, ten thousand users and like ten million messages with tickets, whatever? Do you have like some scales for that so that we? Uh, can like estimate uh, for sizing of the machines? Absolutely. So we have, um, if you want to read ahead before consulting a partner, you can do so, or you can do it in parallel. It's under chatgrape.com slash doc slash uh, doc. You can find the full documentation, including hardware requirements and so on. Um, but uh, the important part here is that we constantly adapt Grape and improve it. So the numbers, you know, go down as we move forward. One particular thing that changed our assumptions a lot was, of course, COVID, where um, we for a while became the largest education app in the App Store uh, due to our partnership with Untis, where we have a white labeled uh, product with the largest school software provider. And so for a split second, we were one of the largest and fastest growing and worst uh, rated apps because kids hate homework. And if anybody, <laughs> would have known you know uh, uh, in my school time 20 years ago or so that we would be uh, the ones in charge of getting at 2.5 million students their homework uh, I would have spent my, my time in the locker right <laughs> would have thrown me into the trash can or something but uh, uh, the, the general um, um, challenge that we faced there of course was tremendous and so we we learned a lot uh, during that time and now the system, even in a large, you know, Kubernetes cluster can scale to a size that doesn't make any sense to a normal business company because uh, nobody has, you know, 2.5 million students or something in one cluster. But um, that has given us uh, particularly new data for even the largest sizes and the largest activities. Cool. Thanks. Do you have also like some tutorials and maybe like some repos to check out the implementations for integrations? So there, we have a full-on documentation uh, within the chatgrip.com slash doc thing. Uh, we also have a, a cool new curriculum for server setup and server development for our partners. So if a partner signs up through our channel activity platform, um, they, they can look up all these things. It's a video tutorial line and so on. So it's very easy and straightforward. Um, also, if you want to, um, if you set up your own server somewhere, for a testing environment, if you want to develop a particular integration, you will have uh, access to our REST API through Swagger. So you can even see um, the API calls, the REST calls and the responses in real time, which helps a lot um, to, to make an integration work. Cool, thank you. Perfect. Um, do you also have some kind of, I don't know how to call that, marketplace or something where I can exchange the stuff that I write? So if I'm a customer and I have a nifty integration that I want to share with the world, how can I do that? Not on the level uh, of Atlassian, of course. Yeah. Um, in general, um, 
what we what we do have is um, we we usually go into the marketplace of the particular software, right? Mm -hmm. So if you integrate us into Monday.com, we show up in Monday's uh, platform, right, with that particular integration. Um, but within Grape, we are working on making it uh, easier for users to, you know, uh, look up certain integrations and so on. But at the moment, the driving factor is more through partners that develop solutions um, outside of the, you know, the most common integrations that you can find on our website and within our integration um, overview and so on. So if the user clicks on service integrations in our cloud system or the administrator looks through the list of integrations that are available, they already find every logo of every integration that has been made. But if it comes to uh, the sophisticated sidebar integrations and so on, they go directly through the Jira marketplace because the integration yep. has to be added there. Right. So this this will need a bit more time. So I joined in on July first, so just give me three or four more months. Right? <laughs> marketplace now. But more seriously, uh, Hubert, you, you you work at an end customer, Frank. You are, you work at an end customer, if if I remember right. So you don't, for example, you don't need to be an Atlassian partner to be a great partner, right? Uh, sure, it's, it's, it's always good to know the Atlassian bodies and to know the Atlassian universe and who is using this, who is using that. But if you have some specific ideas, Jörg, as you mentioned with Jira Service Desk, putting some intelligence in front of it, so, so structuring through or finding answers through a structured tree, uh, this is something you can, you can develop, right? So this is something where you can add on uh, an integration into Grape, right? If this is for one customer, that's cool. If you want to share the IPs with the market, that's also cool. So we do have the Jira and the Confluence in the integration in uh, in the marketplace, uh, which has been done by the now by now consultants. Uh, and if you go into the marketplace, you will find out that this, this is actually for free, which is not. Yeah, but it's simply a yeah a fault by the partner not to put the, to put a price tag on it. So it's six euros per year per user for the Jira and Confluence integration which means very little money. So that's just 50 cents per month per user, right? So that's, that's, you know, that's super easy. That also tells you that the effort to develop an integration can't be that high because otherwise the price per user uh, must be much higher, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we always have, you know, other partners who say, well, this is not really developed, but this is more like a religion. Talk about Cliffy or Draw.io, right? And, and you end up in, in a useless, endless discussion, right? Mm. So this is, this is, yeah, really, really, really funny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Just one word from me. We will continue this series. So till the end of the year and next year, and we want to see you again first okay. quarter next year. Mm -hmm. So as far as I understood it, there will be huge progress over Christmas and everything. Mm -hmm. So it would be a good idea to have you back in the first quarter of next year to share all that new excitement. Yeah, yeah, and come up with some interesting customer stories. You know, this is all this is all what we are focusing. We are really not trying to sell. This is this is uh, not only with with Atlas, and this has been my my well my memo before. Just saying, okay, let the customer buy. You can't sell anything the customer doesn't really want. You just have to show what's in it for the customer, and I think that's super important. And you are both in super fast changing industries. And, and, and when I look at the release cycle only at, at yeah, some, some portals, it's super important to uh, also to have, to have a good yeah, messenger platform in place, right? Yeah. So really interesting, okay? So okay. super cool. Thanks for having us here. And I'm off now, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. Have a good time, bye. bye, -bye.